Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, one of the first things you typically, at least what I do when I look at a piece of malware, is run the Linux strings command on it doesn't often reveal a ton of interesting stuff, but well, when it works, it's quick and certainly can tell you a little bit more about the binary you are dealing with. Now, as I mentioned, the strings command doesn't always really reveal a lot. There are a number of different techniques, how you can sort of obfuscate strings to not show up. And one technique is today discussed by Jim and that's stack strings. Stack strings are strings that are assembled on the stack by as Jim calls it, type one stack strings, just copying one letter at a time to the stack, assembling the string that you would like to use. And that way, of course, the binary, you don't have the string, you just have individual letters, which usually don't really show up easily when you're using the strings command. Now, another type of stack string that Jim is talking about here is what he's calling type two stack string. Type two stack strings, well, same idea, similar idea, but uh, they're copied four letters at a time. And they may actually be using the push command, which is the normal command that you're using to send data to the stack instead of the move instruction that type one stack strings use. Now, one reason why you may see some of these type two strings still in the strings output is that the opcode for the push command is 68 in hexadecimal, which is the ASCII code for the lowercase h. So in your output, you see four ASCII characters interrupted by the letter H and that uh, if you see this pattern well that's what you're dealing with just remove the H's and you may end up with the string that the attacker is trying to assemble. Now, of course, if you want to use a little bit of better tool than strings uh, to extract uh, strings from a binary, there is Floss. That's the tool by FireEye. I think I talked about it last week that does deal with some of these uh, deobfuscation technique, does not deal with these type two strings, but Jim did file an issue with them, a feature request on GitHub. So maybe they'll add this as a feature in the future. And yesterday I talked about the problem with the expiration of the add trust external certificate authority root. Well, if you're still having issues with that, there's a real nice blog post I want to link to in the show notes by Andrew Iyer that uh, tells you how to fix this issue if you are using older versions of OpenSSL, in particular version 1.0 and GNU TLS. Some of the currently still sort of operational supported Debian and uh, I believe also some CentOS versions still run these versions of OpenSL and GNU TLS. So you want to take a look at his blog post to how to fix uh, the problem with this expired uh, root cert. LibreSSL appears to be affected as well. But then again, LibreSSL is so close to OpenSL that of course it is affected by some of the same issues. And about two weeks ago, VMware published Security Advisory VMSA 2020-0010. In this advisory, they fixed one vulnerability in vCloud Director. This vulnerability, CVE 2020-3956, was actually a remote code execution vulnerability. And we now have additional detail, including a proof of concept exploit from Citadello, the company that originally discovered this vulnerability. So this is one of those have to patch now vulnerabilities. If you have VMware Cloud Director in your environment, VMware Cloud Director is usually used uh, to manage larger private clouds, but of course can also be used by 
clouds that are built around VMware that are exposed to the public. And as a developer, I highly recommend that you take a look at the blog post to not make that same mistake yourself. It's actually sort of an injection into the expression language. So not a standard sort of SQL injection or anything like that, but still very similar. And you certainly should be familiar with this form of injection flaw. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.